So we're going to talk now about your most recent film, uh, which is um, called The Music of Strangers. Mm -hmm. Let's watch a clip right now. The clearest reason for music, for culture, is it gives us meaning. We started as an idea group of musicians getting together and seeing what might happen when strangers meet. We scoured from Venice to Istanbul, Central Asia, China, and Mongolia, looking for incredible talent. American orchestra, that's very interesting. This was like the Manhattan Project of music. No one knew what was going to happen. I knew there was going to be naysayers. You're taking this traditional music, mixing it together, and diluting these traditions. Arts is about opening up to possibility. Possibility links to hope. We all need hope. I'm always trying to figure out how I fit in the world, which I think is something that I share with seven billion other people. Since I left Syria, I found myself experiencing emotions far more complex, like can a piece of music stop a bullet? In 1966, Cultural Revolution, my parents asked me to learn music to escape. In Iran, the revolution, chaos, I had to leave. By trying to kill the human spirit, the answer of the human spirit is to revenge with beauty. I think the challenge is keeping your roots alive. That's a new way of thinking about music, about what people can do together. There's no East or West, it's just the globe. We don't speak perfect English or perfect Chinese or perfect Persian, but we speak perfect music language. Being part of this experiment makes me understand what it means to be alive. Everybody is afraid, but you make a connection to another human being. You can turn fear into joy. So the Yo-Yo Ma called this this group he assembled the the Silk Road Ensemble. Mm -hmm. um, what was your experience when you first met Yo-Yo Ma? What was that like? Now well, he is obviously a very world-renowned mm -hmm. cellist. Mm -hmm. And again, it's part of the world of music I didn't know that much about. I mean, mm -hmm. I knew my basics of classical music and yo-yo, but mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I didn't really know who he was and what, where he was coming from. Yeah. Um, and I had one of those classic document, documentarian experiences where you meet somebody and you say, oh, I could follow this guy with a camera anywhere. Yeah, yeah. Because um, he was so unexpectedly... Um, funny and smart and profane. <laughs> right, wow. Yeah, all things I did not expect. Wow. I mean, he was really just um, kind of a revelation for me. Um, but more than anything, the ideas that he's been grappling with as an artist for mm -hmm. 50 years now mm -hmm. are the same things I grapple with, which is how, how does our art and our culture um, make the world a better place? How do we yes. use it to do something other than just um, uh, enjoy ourselves. You know, what's the value of aesthetics in that way? And I think he has been really struggling with that. Yes. And I think really coming up with interesting answers for yeah. that. Yeah. And I think the thing that I came to understand, and part of what he's trying to do with these musical exchanges and this idea of bringing together musicians of vastly different backgrounds, is very much this idea that we understand more about other people through our culture than through anything else. I mean, and by culture, I mean food and film and yes, music. I mean, everything. we know more, I know more about Thailand through Thai food than I do through That's anything right. else. You know, That's that right. It's a way of understanding. And I think that's his big thing is it's this idea of empathy. How do we build empathy? Yeah, yeah. And, and I think I was, I've been thinking about the same issues. I mean, I, I, I love this Roger Ebert quote where he called movies empathy machines. Yeah, and yeah. I think music and, and film can fulfill both that, that same purpose, which is we get to understand something of the other. We get to walk in somebody else's shoes. And they're, not, they're no longer 
demonizable. They're not the other anymore. There's somebody who we can relate to. You see the, the, the human and the spiritual connection. Absolutely. You and know. you realize the commonalities in terms yes. of what people really want and how we think about things and our common, you know, everything from our DNA to our moral structure. You know, I think music and culture just help bring all that out in a way that religion and politics and economics often do the opposite of. That's right. You know, and I, you know, I grew up as a preacher's son, so I, I, you know, to me it's like music is one of those things that it's in the human experience, but it takes you to another place that's not really human. No. You can't, it's, it's like consciousness or something, yeah. so it becomes something that is, that is otherworldly almost, you well, know, and it transforms you. And, and I like the way Yo-Yo Ma says, uh, it, you know, he, he's, his focus is turning fear into joy. I thought, you know, and even he learned from meeting all these people from all around the world how important it is, even more than he probably originally even thought, right? Mm -hmm. how, Absolutely, and I think it's it's become this kind of his life's calling, mm -hmm. uh, in a way of trying to figure out how he can use the arts to make people understand each other. And and I know that sounds very kind of Pollyanna-ish, yeah. you know. Yeah. But at the same time, he's a believer in it, and I've seen evidence of it in what he's done, and not just him, but the musicians who he's gathered. And it's something in America we tend to think of the arts as nice but non-essential. You know, That's it's right. like the frosting on the cake. You know, to me really it's the opposite. It's the culture's the plate that the cake sits on. You know oh, that I couldn't agree with you more, Morgan, and I thank you for saying that on this show.